Hi all, I'm Elizabeth Brown coming to you from Neo Granada, Spain. If you're watching this on the Translators Aloud channel and you're new to the channel, welcome. The piece I'll be reading from today is from a story that I've titled The Family Guest. This story is mostly my original work, but it was very much inspired by the Spanish language short story La Resucitada, written by Galician journalist and fiction writer Emilia Pardo Bazan and published in 1908. Things get spooky quickly in both my story and the original, and so it's exciting to be able to post this video in October. I have just finalized this story, so it will need a home soon. Contact me at the link in the caption or description if you're a publisher, especially if you like short speculative fiction. And without further ado, here's the opening of my story, The Family Guest. Four candles in ornate iron holders burned around a lone beer shedding beads of wax. From its inverted roost in an unlit vault overhead, a bat took flight, tracing an awkward curve through the air. A flat black puddle form suddenly left its slow glide across the damp stone floor, grabbing a fold of low hanging funeral pall to begin an ascent of the beer. At that moment, as her body lay atop the bier, amidst a mound of white linen, the eyes of Dorotea de Guevara opened. Why was she here? She knew full well she was not dead. But as she lay there, ragged patches of memory flickered through her mind. She had felt herself washed, then enshrouded by unseen hands. She had heard the murmurs of her husband, Felipe, to the servants, and had felt the tears of her children, Juana Maria and Vicente Luis, on what must have appeared to them to be her white, dead face, and what had felt like a fibrous, soft shell all around her had prevented all sight and speech. There must have been a terrible mistake. And now, by herself in the locked, silent church, she had awakened. This was not a nightmare, it was real. Around her was the coffin, surrounding it were the candles, and she was wrapped in a white shroud, the final blessing of a scapular of divine mercy on her breast. But now that she was fully awake again, the simple joy of being alive overwhelmed everything else. She carefully raised her right hand, wriggled her fingers, and then raised the left and did the same. Then she wiggled her toes, all in order. However, something felt odd about having these sinew and bone appendages return to her complete control. Perhaps it was a leftover effect of having been unconscious for hours, days. How good it was to live anew and not to fall into death's dark well. Instead of being lowered into the crypt at dawn on the shoulders of servants, she would now return to her home, to the joyful clamor of those who loved her. Her heart, still a bit weak, beat as fast as a bird's at the thought of being reunited with her family. But how would Felipe, the servants, or from that matter her doctor, made such an enormous error? Had no one thought of feeling for a heartbeat or listening for the faintest hint of breath? That's it. Needless to say, things get weirder from there. A little bit more about Emilia Pardo Bazan. She was born in the Galician city of A Coruña in 1851, and she died in Madrid in 1921. A very culturally active time. Uh, she led a life of a, as a woman of letters and a cultural activist. She's known for her role in bringing the naturalist movement to Spanish thought and letters. Now, naturalist artists, like their realist cousins, sought to reproduce perceptible reality in an objective, documentary-like way. She was a prolific writer of fiction of all lengths, and her book, La Tribuna, is recognized today as the first Spanish-language naturalist novel. Now, someone who is new to her writing, who reads just a few of her stories, would think that she was a die-hard realist who would have scoffed at anything of the eerie or supernatural. But if you thought that, you'd be wrong. Other realists also seem to have loved tales of the eerie 
Henry James, for example, published his famous spooky story, Turn of the Screw, only 10 years before La Resucitada appeared on the scene. La Resucitada does not suggest a cause for the protagonist's apparent return from the dead. And so it was very appealing to me because I adore stories that allow the reader to come up with their own answers to difficult questions. The link to the original version of La Resucitada is in the caption or description for this video. I hope you enjoyed this short reading. Thanks for watching. And thanks to Translators Aloud for providing this platform. And I hope to be back soon with another work.